In this video, I will both explain what a daddy long legs is, why its legs are so long, and how they got their name. First, let's start with how they got their name. The reality is, it's not really known. The first instances of the expression daddy long legs came about in Britain in the 1800s. Now, what is a daddy long legs and why? Well, the term is generally used to describe any arthropod with long, gangly legs. Legs that seem almost impractical in their function. There's actually quite a few species from vastly different groups that exhibit this trait, and it's not used to refer to any one specific species or genera. Because of this, this video will briefly go over each one and explain what it uses its legs for, that is, why it has them. Also, remember, all the bugs shown in this video are harmless, and often helpful to have in your home. So keep this in mind before you kill them out of fear. Cellar spiders have likely the longest legs in comparison to their body size of any spider group. And in addition, they are extremely common in households. Some people call them pests because they are quite creepy but they actually kill mosquitoes, flies, moths, ants, cockroaches, and even other spiders, and do millions of dollars worth of pest control every year. These arachnids have such long legs because they do not actually catch other bugs in a sticky web. That is, the webs they do make are not sticky and help them by expanding their sense of vibration. They need this because they catch prey by ambushing them and grasping them into submission until they can wrap them up in silk. The web is more of a tripwire system than a sticky trap. The legs can help them because they are covered in sensory hairs, and so longer legs actually give them a wider depth of field, so to speak, with their sense of vibration. They are synergistically able to capture prey easier, stay at a safe distance from that prey, and sense them quicker in their webs, using their long legs. Harvest men are not spiders. They are arachnids, however, they just belong to the order Opiliones, whereas spiders belong to the order Aranae. Unlike spiders, harvestmen's cephalothorax, that is, the body part which the limbs and head are attached to, is fused to their abdomen making it look like they have just one big body segment, whereas in spiders, the abdomen is separate and articulate. Almost all harvestmen have extremely long legs, whereas some spiders, like jumping spiders, have relatively short legs. But why? Why such long legs? Well, unlike spiders, harvestmen don't spin webs. They don't hunt, they don't trap prey, or fight. These arachnids are scavengers looking for prey along the forest floor. They are unlike cellar spiders because they do not hunt with their legs. But they are similar to cellar spiders because they use their long legs as effective sensory tools to sense what's going on around them through vibrations. They have relatively weak, light-sensing eyes, and in effect, their legs are their eyes. And because their legs are so long, they can see that much better. This defense against predators is important, and they are well adapted towards it. They can actually shed their legs if a leg is caught or grasped by a predator, and studies have shown that they can effectively relearn how to walk with fewer and fewer legs, although it typically takes them more time to learn how to walk again the more legs you subtract. Some harvestmen are predatory, but interestingly, the ones that tend towards this typically have shorter, sturdier legs, likely to assist in prey capture. Crane flies are quite interesting insects. They are not arachnids and exhibit complete metamorphosis. What this means is that the majority of their life is spent as little larvae until they'll pupate into adults after about a year. When they emerge, they have enormous gangly legs, 
But why? Well, they only live a few weeks as adults, and many do not feed during this time. Because of this, they are built quite poorly, because they're designed for a single task, and thus are built disposable to save on resources. The long legs of crane flies serve a few purposes in relation to their flight. First, they help stabilize the insect in flight, as their long limbs provide better balance than short legs would have. They hold them outstretched for balance when they do this, similarly to beetles, among other insects. Additionally, the legs assist with gentle landings, helping to cushion the impact and prevent damage to their fragile wings. Though these insects have relatively short lifespans and do not feed during their adult stage, the long legs also help them to detect vibrations, giving them an added sense of awareness about their surroundings, much like other arthropods with long legs. While crane flies are equipped for flight, their wings and legs are adapted to make their short life as efficient as possible, allowing them to navigate the world without causing too much harm to their delicate bodies. The wings typically don't fold over their bodies, which is rare among insects, and they are mechanistically inferior to those of the housefly. They are not articulate, can't be moved independently of one another, and effectively work like a toggle rather than an articulated limb-like structure. The legs help counteract this in crane flies by providing balance and cushion for landings, as well as better sensing danger. The development of long legs is an interesting adaptation among arthropods, precisely because of the myriad different circumstances in which it has arisen. The three bugs shown in this video all have vastly different lifestyles and strategies, and the biggest link between them is how they use their long legs to sense their environment through vibrations. It's a convergently evolved adaptation for three vastly different and unique lifestyles. From stationary to nomadic to temporary use for flight, the daddy long legs are far more varied and sophisticated than the general use of their name. Thanks for watching this episode of Privileged Bug Facts. Stay tuned for more bug content. Thanks.